Once before, so some of you may remember some of the things I shared. I was wondering how many of you like art? How many of you like art either by doing appreciation or watching others create it? Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So that is um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is how important art is to our communities. Now, Art with a Heart has been around since 2009. I am one of the founders, and we are in uh, Whitby. We've been in Durham Region uh, the entire time, and our boundaries are outside of Durham Region once in a while, but most of it is from Pickering through to like all the, all the sides of Durham Region. So we take our programs often to other places, and then we also have individuals coming to our location to do programs there, and we have some new programs that have just launched. You have them on your table for the, the Let's Create and Connect and Create that are now programs that are running at our um, place on a bi-weekly basis. I have notes, and I have notes because I will talk for a long time if I don't have notes. So I'm going to follow a few of them just so I stay on track. And um, we partner with other groups. So a lot of the people that you may already know, we partner with places like The Refuge, we partnered with Fairview Lodge, we've partnered with uh, Autism Ontario regularly. They come and do workshops at our location. We um, have partnered with, oh my goodness, there's so many places. Um, uh, DFCC, um, Durham Family Court Clinic. There's been a lot of of groups that we work with so we come alongside of other groups and we provide programming for their people with our specialty and we have a great ability to customize programs because of the nature of our training we are a group of um, artists uh, registered psychotherapists expressive arts therapists dance and movement therapists um, we have um, volunteers that are from a wide variety of different backgrounds. We've had some nurses that have been volunteers, so all different people from different walks, but most of them from a therapeutic background um, that come in to help us. And um, <clears throat> the model allows us to work with children through seniors because of our training. An expressive arts frame allows us to work with any age group. So we can customize programs to suit the people that we're with. And um, we strive to make our place, um, warm, friendly, safe, inclusive, and hopefully fun. But the reality is the arts touch people's spirits and stuff comes out as well. So even in our fun programs, although most of our programs have a therapeutic bent to them, and there's usually, um, when you're partnering with other agencies, a hopeful outcome of some nature, um, art is intrinsically healing and a lot of it brings other things out in people and so it opens things up that we can work with further. Um, our hearts are for people, our hearts are for relationships and for community and though we use the arts it is truly a tool. It is a tool that helps us a means to an end and that end is to be with people. That end is to encourage people to help them see their strengths and their capacities and to help them find a voice that they may not have had before. So. I wanted to share some stats with you. The stats are really hard. Um, I'm going to skip the stats, but it was just about the fact, I don't know if you've heard some of the things going on the radio lately, that the new generation is the loneliest generation ever known because of cell phones and social everything, um, that they are not making connections face to face and with people. That is one of the things that art making um, can help. Um, Durham Region, mental health issues and stress levels and all of that type of thing is on the increase since 2015. There's a great report which I found, which is online, that talks about the stats in Durham Region, about how many people are feeling stressed and depressed. And um, in the same report, there was promising practices that could really change the outcome of people's lives. Uh, the recreation um, programs offer a better quality of life no matter what the background. So if you have people who are on social assistance, for example, like it says that 50% of them will be single parents, 45% of them will suffer depression. The numbers go on and on and they're really, like you, you know from what you're doing at Central Halls. I used to work at Central Halls on my house, by the way. Yeah, with Sherry. So um, anyway, um, so you know, the stats are crazy and recreation programs can really help them. But the things that you have to come um, overcome are cost, transportation, awareness, and then once they have awareness of where those resources might be, is a humiliating process at times of 
how to get those funds and the information they have to give and the stories that they have to tell. So we have tried with these new programs to overcome those barriers. And these new programs, you can read about on the back of them. I know our time is very limited. I wanted to share a couple of stories with you. We have had, since we started at the end, oh, that was the, that was the end of it? Okay. I thought that was one more minute. I'm sorry when I heard that sound. Okay. All right. So I can't share the stories with you, but I would love to share stories with you. <laughs>